on this one I wanted to talk about sprue and runner design or just designing of your gating system. Now your gating system, you know, when making metal casting is essentially the plumbing system of the mold. It's how the fluid, the molten metal, will actually go into the system and fill up your, your casting, your mold cavity. Whoops, goes into the casting, goes through the choke or the well, goes into the runners and into a gating system, uh, fills up the mold cavity. These are just more or less gibberish mold cavity and your risers and you know it gives you your casting in the end now this isn't just always a simple case of just pouring molten metal into a pocket you know you do need this casting system to accomplish certain things but when you design your casting system there's a couple of things that you might wanna or you should keep in mind you know one is you want to make sure that the fluid that's flowing through this system is going fast enough to avoid any kind of premature solidification you know we went through how um, metal uh, solidifies and we discussed that and you could see that you know you could actually time how much that particular mass and that particular surface area that whole system is going to take to solidify so you have a finite amount of time to pour this through this isn't like pouring water through a, a plumbing system in that regard at the same time you want to make sure that it's slow enough it's slow enough that you don't have a lot of turbulence you know, one of the issues with metal casting and one of the ways you end up with a lot of defects is having air that gets entrained in the system. So you pour molten metal into this basin which goes through the sprue and it also drags air in with it. You end up with air going in with the system. Uh, it's still in a turbulent state and you, when it, it actually solidifies to a casting you end up with a lot of porosity or, or pockets or incompletions inside of that casting. So when you do this system, your gating system, which is composed of all these components here, your sprue, your runners, your choke, gating side, these are all things that have to be taken into consideration when you do your, uh, your, de your design for that mold, just to make sure you avoid some of these common problems. Now, one of the main principles that you're going to concern yourself with when designing a mold for a casting is something called Bernoulli's Principle and Bernoulli's theorem. It's based on the conservation of energy and it relates to the pressure, the velocity, and the elevation. So pressure, velocity, and elevation of a fluid at any location in the system. So when you've got a, a mold and you've got you know the sprue, the gating system, the runners, you know, and all the other components that go along with that mold system, you have to consider these three things. So how, how it's going to be a pressure, what the pressure is going to be, how fast it's traveling through the system, and any elevation changes. And this is what Bernoulli's theorem works out to. It basically is the elevation, or in this case, the height, the pressure, and then this here is the velocity component. So really this comes down to a kinetic and static pressure, and then head pressure is what these really work into when, when you got to Bernoulli's equation. And what Bernoulli's equation is saying is this is constant throughout the system. If you were to take any two points in this system, in this case, you know, H1 and H2, so it kind of showing a really dynamic system here with a lot of variety to it, and you uh, look at the summation of those three components at this point, it should equal the same at this point here. Now certain aspects of change, you have a change in, in uh, your, your elevation from H1 to H2. You may have a change in your velocity from V1 to V2. And you may have a change in, in uh, your pressure from P1 to P2. But the summation, you know, where one will drop, the other one will pick up. You know, you know there's, or one might stay constant. So there's going to be some change in some rearranging and you will end up seeing a constant between these uh, two components. So again, based on the conservation of energy, and these are the components, H is just the elevation, P is the pressure, G, V is the velocity of the fluid flowing, uh, G is just the gravitational constant, and Rho is the density of the fluid. And what it's showing you is that Bernoulli's equation is there's a, a component at one part of your hydraulic system, or in this case, your mold, is going to equal to these three components summed up at any other point in your in your fluid system. So keeping that in mind, this is the way a fluid system is going to work out. Uh, way, you know, this is the equation that's going to really drive a lot of your design decision. 
in your in, in your mold in order to avoid number one you know, not filling up the mold fast enough to get the you know, solidification in place but also potentially having turbulence both of these this is your starting point let me show you how you're going to utilize this this plus you know two other principles so far off one is the Bernoulli's equation and when here we have an example of the of the mold cavity itself or the mold itself and we've seen this in our, in our past videos so some assumptions that we're going to make so there are going to be some assumptions that we're going to make one is that we're going to assume that the elevation at two we can call that zero so we're just going to measure and let's say we're, we're talking about just designing the sprue itself okay so just looking at the sprue itself what we're going to do is we're going to look at and call H0 or H2 0 and H1 we're going to count there so we, so this is going to be at height of 0 just a datum point of 0 and this one is at uh, H2 so just looking at a total height here we'll count call this out at 0 also in a system this small as a mold cavity typically unless you're dealing with uh, one like a, a die cast system where there's actually a pressure imparted onto the system you can consider these pressures equal P1 and P2 so they cancel each other out on both sides of the equation so we assume that the pressure here is there is no significant difference in the pressure at any point in this system also when considering the pouring basin the whole purpose of the pouring basin and this system is for is to be able to meter the fluid as it flows through so the top of this basin compared to the rest of the system is going to be a relatively slow system so V1 would actually go to zero as well so we're counting a lot of these things out either as equalized between the pressure the height is zero because we're using that as the datum point and the first velocity is so slow that we're considering it zero just because of the, the, the relative uh, velocity between the rest of the system so what that does is it reduces this to this equation here where h1 is equal to this term here velocity 2 squared which would be the bottom of this of the sprue divided by twice the gravity and in order to solve for that velocity just multiply both sides by 2 times gravity so it's by 2g and what you end up with and then take the square root you end up with the velocity at the bottom of this sprue is equal to the square root of 2 times g times h now that is how you would find out how fast is this fluid which is going through free fall this molten metal how fast what the actual velocity of that molten metal is at the bottom of this sprue now this is significant because this goes into telling you how much you have to change the choke the well or you know or the base of the sprue in order to regulate the velocity further on into the system so this velocity is very important as in the starting point for knowing how to design your the velocity in the sprue now one thing this goes into as well is this will let you know do you want to change this height you know so you this will let you know do you want to change the height based on that velocity so if your velocity is too high or too low you can make some sort of engineering assessment now because you have a way of calculating what the velocity should be at the bottom of that sprue so at this point we've considered the velocity of the sprue so this is letting us know you know what type of issues we're going to have going at the bottom of that sprue we've made the decision on whether or not we're going to have a choke or a well do we have to control that temperature or control that velocity as well as you know what type of height would be uh, ideal in order to get the velocity that we need going through this system and again what we need will be determined by other aspects of, of the system again whether it's going to go whether it's going fast enough to fill it up before any sort of solidification or going slow enough to avoid entrapping air in the system another aspect of looking at this system or in the design is this uh, law here is the law of mass continuity and what this is basically saying is that the flow rate Q is equal to the area times the velocity at any point 
is going to be equal to the area times the velocity at another point. Now, what's the purpose of this in terms of mold design? Well, let's start here at, at we're coming out of our sprue. So we're at the bottom of our sprue or at a choke, and we need to go into the runners and the gating system. So what this speaks to is really how much of a transition do we allow into this system as we're into the runners, as we go in between gates, or different types of runners and into different types of gates, and further going into the mold cavity where we want it to actually you know, do the most good. We start to consider how big do we want these runners to be in terms of diameter, because this is what's going to start affecting or what we actually have a lot more control over as we start designing this system. We can actually start considering how big of a diameter do we want as we go from one point to another. And like I said, so this is taking a, this as an example, we come down from the sprue and we enter into say this is a runner and if we consider how fast we want to go into and fill this mold cavity, we may consider how much we want to change the size or the diameter of say this gate. You know, again, this is based on you know the, the two principles of idea of filling up in time before it starts to solidify, but not going so fast that we do, uh, end up entrapping air in the system and causing porosity. So you've got this law of mass continuity, and when you start considering the sizes of your runners and your gates throughout your system, again, you know, so keeping in mind, you've got a couple of goals that you're trying to achieve you know, certain sort of boundaries that you're trying to achieve as you go through this. And the last thing you want to consider, or not last, but the last principle I'm going to give you, is something called the Reynolds number. Now, what the Reynolds number is, is a way of understanding how much turbulence you have in the system. And what that is, is this the velocity times the diameter times the density of your liquid all over the viscosity of that liquid. So how thick or how resistant to flow that liquid is as it's going through the system. You know, so if something is got a certain viscosity, you know, certain viscosities are more likely to go into certain turbulences than others. You know, and this formula helps you understand where you stand on that. So if you're going you know, under uh, 10,000 Reynolds number, which is a unitless system, a unitless number, under 10,000, you know, you've got a laminar flow. And over 12,000, you know, you're dealing with a turbulent flow. So what you could have is a laminar flow is a nice smooth flow without a whole lot of turbulence, not likely to have a lot of porosity, a lot of entrapped gases. Turbulence, you're more likely to get a lot of gases trapped in the system and potentially have porosity once this solidifies. So those are some of the basic ideas behind your oh behind your 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 fluid design or your your mold design when trying to build a gating system for a you know, a, a, a casting, and some of the considerations and, and areas where you have some influence in order to optimize that design in order to get the best quality mold. And this is Professor Cummings. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.